Hello, boys and girls. So today, Saxon lesson number 27, reading a thermometer to the nearest 10 degrees. So, does anyone know what a thermometer is? Thermometer. Hmm. A thermometer is an instrument we use to measure temperature. So, how does it feel? Is it cold, hot? And it gives us a number. A thermometer gives us a number that will tell us what the what the weather is feeling like, the temperature. So I have a giant example of a thermometer. Ooh. So there's numbers, and on this thermometer, there's numbers on both sides. We're only looking at the numbers on the right side because those tell us Fahrenheit. In America, we, we read thermometers using Fahrenheit, uppercase F. Um, so those are the numbers we're paying attention to. And if you look closely, a thermometer is made of glass. You always have to be very careful. So this in here is glass. And inside, there's a liquid. And that this liquid is red. So this liquid is a, a type of alcohol. But thermometers can either have a red liquid or a silver liquid. And the silver liquid is called mercury. And this liquid reacts with the air around it and changes based on the temperature. So it goes higher up if it gets warmer and lower down when it gets colder. So when you're handling a thermometer, you have to be very careful. This one has wood surrounding it, so um, it's not as fragile, but usually a thermometer is just the glass in the middle. And so you have to find where that line goes to. And here our thermometer is right there. And here are actually our numbers on the right side. Um, um, don't even show every number. So this one goes 20, it skips 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So ours is actually closest to 70 degrees. But <clears throat> you've probably seen a thermometer, um, a picture of a thermometer on our math meeting board right there. You look at it in the corner. That's our thermometer that we're going to start using once we're back in school together. So um, we're gonna, I'm going to teach you how to read thermometer to the nearest 10. And I'm going to use this picture of it as a way to talk about it. So uh, as you can see, these big um, numbers counting by 10s have a long line connected to it. And then there's little hashes between it. So your mercury will fill up starting at the bottom. Well, the red isn't mercury. We're telling this is the, uh, the alcohol. And let's say the line came up to here. What 10 is that closest to? It's closest to 20, right? So when I say 10, I mean which of these counting by 10s numbers is it closest to? It's closest to 20. So this would look like 20 degrees. The symbol for degrees is a little circle in the air. And then F, uppercase F for Fahrenheit. So that would be 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It's exactly to the line with 20. What would happen if our thermometer line, the alcohol in it, came up to the first little line? What is it closest to now? It's still closest to the 20, right? It's not closest to 30. It's closest to 20. It's one, two, three, hash, four hashes away from 30. But it's only one hash away from 20. So this would still be called 20 degrees Fahrenheit. What if it came up one higher? Is it still closest to 20? Let's see. This, it only has one to jump down to get to 20. But up here it has one, two, three to jump up to get to 30. So it's still closest to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. But what happens if it goes up one level higher? What is it closest to now? Is it closest to the 30 or the 20? You're right. It's closest to the 30 now. It's only one, two hashes away from 30. It's one, two, three hashes away from 20. So now it's not 20 degrees Fahrenheit anymore. It would be 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Very good. <coughs> let's move it on up to a different spot let's say it went all the way up to right here 
Now, looking closely, our line comes between the 40 and the 50. So it's either going to be closest to 40 or 50. What do you think it's closest to? Good, it's closest to 40 because it's only one line away from 40. It's one, two, three, four lines away from 50. So this would look like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It's closest to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Very good. Now what if it went all the way up to right here? Is it still closest to 40? It's between the 40 and the 50 still, but it's only one line away from 50. It's one, two, three, four lines away from 40. So it's closest to the 50 now. So we would say this temperature is closest to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Very good. Let's try another one. Let's make it come up even warmer. Remember, the higher the number, the warmer it is. Let's say it came up to here. Let's say the temperature, the line in the thermometer came up, it's between the 50 and the 60, so it's either going to be closest to 50 or closest to 60. Now, is, how many away from 50 is it? 1, 2, 3 away from 50. It's 1, 2 away from 60, so what is it closest to? It's closer to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Very good. What if we took it back one line? What is it closest to now? Can I have red fingers? Um, is it closest to 60 or 50? It's 1, 2 away from 50. 1, 2, 3 away from 60. So it's actually closer to 50 degrees now. 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we're talking about what te what temperature the thermometer is closest to, you're always looking at the two tens that are one above it and one below it. And you're saying, what is it closer to? Is it closer to the one below it or closer to the one above it? And that would be how you figure out what is closest to the nearest ten. So pretty soon we're going to be learning how to read it exactly to the nearest degree. But right now we're just figuring out what it's closest to. So you find the one above it, the 10 above it, and the 10 below it, and whatever one the line comes closer to, that's what your temperature is closest to. So you'll have to do one of those on your guided practice pages. Um, if you want to do that on your own, you can do it on your own, or you can stay on to do it with me. And I'm going to do it right now with you. So you can take that page out, take a look at it, like I said, if you're doing this on your own, then you can sign out of this video now, but if you'd like to work on it with me, you can get started, write your name and date, today's date, remember it's 12 slash 1 slash 20, so 12 stands for December, it's the 12th month. And the 1 means it's our first day in the month. So 12th month, first day in the month, and the year stands for the end of 2020. So 2020, this stands for the end part of 2020. Very good. <clears throat> so our number sentence. Remember, we read it, we look for the important parts and circle them, cross out any extra information that they're giving us. Um, and we have to figure out whether it's some some more or some someone away. Let's get to work. Follow along on your page as I read. There are four green lunch boxes and three yellow lunch boxes on the shelf in Mrs. Taylor's room. There are two green lunch boxes on the floor. How many green lunch boxes are there all together? Draw a picture and write a number sentence for this story. <clears throat> so, where is our question? Look for the question mark, and then everything that comes before that, you'll look for that first word in that sentence, how. How many green lunch boxes are there all together? 
So underline the question, how many green lunch boxes are there all together? What are you looking for? How many what? Grasshoppers? Tomatoes? No, green lunch boxes. So circle green lunch, and I'm going to continue my circle over here, boxes. Green lunch boxes. So we're looking for green lunch boxes. So let's read the rest of the story and find green lunch boxes and then figure out whether this is some, some more, or some, some went away. There are four green lunch boxes and three yellow lunch boxes on the shelf in Mrs. Taylor's room. Whoa, that's a long sentence. Do you, let's focus on what we need to find. We're looking for green lunch boxes. Do we see green lunch boxes in there? There are four green lunch boxes. There we go. Four green lunch boxes. It says, and three yellow lunch boxes. Do we need to know about yellow lunch boxes? No, cross out yellow lunch boxes. We don't need to know about yellow lunch boxes. Do we need to know where they are? Do we need to know that they're on the shelf in Mrs. Taylor's room? Hmm. We have to know how many lunch boxes, how many green lunch boxes there are all together. Does it matter where they are? No, it does not. I'm going to cross out that part too. They're giving us so much extra information. Now, let's look at the next sentence. There are two green lunch boxes on the floor. Do we see green lunch boxes there? Yes. Two green lunch boxes. And on the floor, does it matter that they're on the floor? No, it doesn't really matter that they're on the floor. So, how many green lunch boxes are there all together? I'll give you a hint. This word, all together, all together means you're going to add all together. So, usually when you see all together, that means you're going to add. So, this is going to be a sum, some more question. There were four green lunch boxes. There were two green lunch boxes. So how many green lunch boxes are there all together? Some, some more. So what's the first part of our story? Four green lunch boxes. Good. Four green lunch boxes. Let's draw green lunch boxes. We don't have to make them green. We could just draw a lunch box like that, a rectangle with a little half circle above it. One, four green lunch boxes on the shelf. Two, three, four. Remember, simple pictures are better. You don't want to give too much detail as long as you can kind of tell what they're supposed to be. So in a sum some more story, we draw a line to separate. We have four green lunch boxes, and then there are two green lunch boxes on the floor. I have to draw two more. <coughs> One, two. How many green lunch boxes are all together? Let's write our number sentence. Green lunch boxes. That's a lot of words. Do you remember what we did yesterday? Instead of writing out the whole label, we did abbreviations, right? We did the first letter of each word. So we have green, G for green, L for lunch, B for boxes. G, L, B. Green lunch boxes. So how many were there first? Four green lunch boxes. So four, G, L, B. Plus, remember, some, some more we're adding, plus two green lunch boxes. Two G L B equals, this is how many green lunch boxes are there all together? Four, five, six. Six G L B. So your answer to the question, how many green lunch boxes are there all together? Six G L B. Great job. <clears throat> Let's look at the next one. Ooh, this is what we just learned. 
which number on the thermometer is the temperature closest to? So just out of these numbers on the thermometer, what is it closest to? You can see, this must be mercury because it's gray silver. <laughs> we can see that our line comes between the 40 and the 50. So it's either going to be closest to 40 or closest to 50. What is it closest to? 40 down here or 50 up here? You're right, it's closest to 50. It's only one away from 50. It's one, two, three, four away from 40. Good, so our temperature is closest to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Notice there's the little degree sign and an uppercase F. Very good. Now, for this next part, you need that red green, yellow, crayon. Continue the repeating pattern. So let's start by continuing the repeating pattern and then we'll color the pattern. R for equals red, G equals green, and Y equals yellow. So, first thing we do when we're looking at a pattern, read the pattern. We have to read it. So we're going to say R, G, Y. R, G, oh sorry, oops. I accidentally um, started reading it like it was an ABC repeating pattern. I'm going to start over. Sorry. R, G, Y, G. R, G, Y, G. I want you to try to finish this pattern on your own. R, G, Y, G. R, G, Y, G. Continue it. I'm going to pause here as well. I let you continue it. I want you to try this on your own. Good. Were you able to figure it out? R G Y G R G. Y, G, R, G, Y, G. Very good. And then you color R for red because red begins with R. G for green because green begins with G. Y for yellow because Y begins with yellow and back to G for green. And continue the pattern until you have it all colored in. Very good. Okay, now number four, divide the squares in half two different ways. Color one half of each square red. So you'll need to hang on to that red. And now, when you're dividing it two different ways, you need to make sure that your square, when you divide it, makes two different shapes. So each shape, when you're dividing it, should look the same, but I want the shapes that it makes in this square be different from the shapes it makes in this square. So for example, one way you could divide this square in half would be either with a, hor a horizontal line or a vertical line to make it into two rectangles. So I'll just do a vertical line. That's one option. And now I made it into two smaller rectangles. 
Now with this, I can't do a horizontal line like this because that also makes two rectangles. That's the same way. I need to make another shape. Do you remember what kind of line I could make to make two different shapes? Or different shapes that are different than rectangles? Good, an oblique line. So I could do a line like this, or I could do it going the other way. It doesn't matter. But I can't do both, or else that makes it into fourths. Now color one half of each square red. So here I have one half red, one rectangle red. Remember when we cut, we folded and cut our squares in the classroom? And here I'm coloring one half of this square, which is a triangle, red. Very good. And then number five has you doing what we learned yesterday. First, we're going to number the clock face. We already know how to do that. Start with 12 at top. And go around to the right. One, two. Make sure your numbers are small and neat. Very good. Now, the directions say show half past eight on both clocks. Half past eight. So, instead of being eight o'clock, it needs to be half past eight. So remember what that would look like. I'm using my mini clock. You can always test things out on your handheld clock. Here's eight o'clock. Or my hour hand's at the 8 and my minute hand is straight up. Half past 8 means my minute hand travels halfway around. So now, my minute hand goes straight down to the 8, to the 6, I mean, sorry. 4 minutes. And then the hour, it's halfway past the 8 on its way to the 9. So I can put a dot between the 8 and the 9. Remember, our hour hand is short. It's halfway past the 8 on its way to the 9. So half past 8 is another way of saying 8. How many minutes is this again? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Very good. <clears throat> I hope it was helpful doing this guided practice page with me, and I'll see you in our next lesson.